So the final type of palette I'm going to build are my beam palettes. And this is going to contain all of my information for my zoom and the various gobos that I want to use. Um, and once again, I limit this um, because I don't need access to everything all the time. I just need things that will change and look dynamic. So the beam palettes that I use, I have, an, um, I have my zoom palettes that I use. I have a narrow, a medium, and a wide zoom for everything that has a zoom. Three iris positions for a narrow iris, a uh, medium iris, and an all the way open iris. I have three different types of breakups that I use. I don't set any more than three breakups. Three things that look different is enough. Uh, the last thing you want to do on the day is be scrolling through seven different cues in a cue stack trying to find the one gobo. A lot of times, I just need it to be beamy. So I'll make like a beamy one, and if it has a cone, a coney one, I'll have two or three that are just different enough that they give me different looks. I always make a gobo out, so if I want to pull that out, I have a palette that I can use for that. And then I'll use uh, ones for prism, if I have prisms, prism in, prism out, rotate. So depending on what the fixtures can do, but I keep it fairly limited. You can see here, I'm using a bank of 30, and I'm probably using 23 of them at best, and one of them is a reset that pulls everything out. And then I have this laser one, which is a dedicated zoomed in iris all the way in because it looks really neat and they're all hard beams everywhere. So to record beam palettes, it's very important to be very particular about what you record because beam palette is a very big bucket, right? Beam palette incorporates zoom information and edge information, gobo information, shutter information if you have it. It contains all of that stuff. But we want to be able to use these palettes as building blocks to combine for different looks. So we have to use filtering in a variety of different ways to make sure that we only record the stuff that we want. So let's go ahead and we're going to once again grab these spots and we're going to um, bring the full. And now I want to record um, my beam palette. So I'm going to go ahead and inform. I'm going to go ahead and zoom these all the way out. Right? That would be my wide position. And you can see on my live table here, the only red values that I have, the manual values, are under zoom, right? So I can use that, I can use record only as a filter to make sure that only zoom information gets recorded into this palette. So record only, I tap on that beam palette, and then I'll get that T and a plus again. So I'm going to, once again, run my by type and cleanup. And I now have this we bring, turn all my spots on, I now have the system-wide zoom out that I can use. So I'll go through and I'll do that for my narrow and my medium as well. Next up is going to be my iris. I'll do the same thing for the iris. I'll turn those fixtures on. Right? I'll send that all the way out, which it already is. It's already out, but I still send it all the way out because the easiest type of filter that you can use is record only, because there's a button for it right below record. So if I send it all the way out, even though it's already there, um, I can just use record only to filter that. I do have another option, however. If I didn't make that manual, so if I was to come in here and I was to sneak that out, so it's still all the way out, its default value is all the way open, I could do what's called command line filtering as well. I could say, great, this group, so group 43, I only want iris information. So I could tap on the encoder or I could hit the iris parameter tile here, record, and then iris open, enter, and then I need to make it by type and clean up. But now I've still only recorded this iris information, right? We can see it playing back here on our live table, um, but I didn't end up making it manual. So either command line filtering or record only, uh, use one or the other to, to make sure you parse this data out in an intelligent way. Um, there's also a tool called filters um, that we can use to make sure that we only record specific information. And for more information on filters, uh, check out the dedicated YouTube video for it on ETC's YouTube page.